Hello and welcome to this uh, new episode of Botswana Market Buses. I am Fifi Peters. Now, according to the International Monetary Fund, Botswana boasts one of the strongest economies in Africa. While the uh, diamond-rich country often credits its strong economic performance to its abundant mineral resources, a number of other budding economic opportunities in retail, real estate, as well as the financial sector are on the rise. To unpack Botswana's standing right now as one of Africa's fastest growing economies, I am joined by Tapelo Chiole, the uh, CEO of the uh, Botswana Stock Exchange. Also joining us is Kapumpe Chola Kaunda, director of a Rand Merchant Bank, Botswana, Franz Rehart, the chief financial officer of CA Sales Holdings, as well as Guido Jacchetti, executive chairman of the real estate group and RDC Property Group. Uh, lady and gentlemen, uh, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Tapelo, I was uh, hoping that you could just set the tone for us, so just uh, reflecting on current market developments uh, right now. I mean, as a CEO, of a stock market, uh, your uh, job, I suppose, is to increase the number of uh, uh, companies that are listed on your exchange, to grow the level of uh, liquidity on your exchange, both in uh, volume and in uh, value uh, terms. If we just take stock of where the BSC is right now, just as we've passed the halfway mark of 2023, how would you say that the year has unfolded for your exchange, sir? Yeah, I think if you look at the first six months of the year, uh, in terms of the general performance of the market, we realize that the benchmark index, uh, which is an indicator of market performance in Botswana, the domestic company index, have gone up by about 6.8%. Uh, but when you look at the total return index, uh, which is another mark that takes into consideration the general dividend payout of the companies, it's up about 12.4%. I think this is a brilliant start uh, for, for, for the year in comparative to uh, the last over five years or so uh, when you look in comparative basis. And if you look at the, the real performance in terms of the profitability of the company, I think most of the companies have started to uh, breach their COVID level uh, uh, or pre-COVID level. Uh, profits are now back into full swing. I think we see that uh, although turnover levels are not yet recovered, uh, at about 3.8 million pula per day, which is relatively less than last year's of about 7 million pula per, per day, largely on the large trade that happened before the, the six month end last year. You realize that it's a little bit thin, but the expectation is that we know 100% sure that by the end of the year, the BS is going to end the year with record turnover levels. Uh, the number of deals which are on the pipelines, the number of uh, regulatory uh, 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 issues that we are still looking at to pave way for a number of deals, which I think are going to uh, tremendously increase turnover levels. And also, I think if you look at the general performance of all majority of the stocks, more than more than 60% of the companies in BSD uh, have actually fully recovered in terms of the the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the green area compared to last year. So we have a, a very good growth in terms of the 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 return of the, uh, the prices of most of the companies. But you look at the, the listings level, there are a number of companies that we are tracking to. We expect to see maybe uh, at bare minimum one or two listings by the end of the year. In terms of equities, we are looking at exchange traded funds listings uh, where in terms of applications that are on, on our desks. Uh, and we might end up uh, closing these deals uh, before the end of the year. I think some of the regulatory approvals uh, with other regulatory bodies, if they if they so succeed. So I think generally, I think the the market is 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 quite doing well. But I think the the general performance of the market is largely driven by the the local participants. We have seen a little bit of reduced participation of foreigners to about twenty six percent from our historic about 40% to 45% of the foreigners in our market. But this is mainly due to the fact that, you know, as interest rates are higher in developed countries, most foreigners tend to take their money to developed countries relative to developing countries. So we think with the returned profitability of our companies, we look forward to the return of the foreigners in, the, in, our, in our market. That is basically on the, on the equity side. 
Okay. Uh, Tapala, we'll come back to you uh, just as you speak about the other aspects of your market. I know there's other instruments for investors that to uh, choose from, yes. but perhaps just to get some introductory remarks also from the rest of the panel. Kapumpe, I mean, Tapelo talking about the strong gains that, uh, relatively strong gains that the BSC has witnessed so far this year, projecting a, uh, a record in terms of turnover according to his expectations for the BSC for, uh, for 2023 at, at, at large. As a, an existing player, uh, on the market right now. Perhaps you can just also uh, help us take stock of uh, the uh, sector that uh, you are currently uh, list in right now in terms of finance and, and, and how would you say the year has been for you? Hi, thank you and, and, and good day to, to all our viewers. Um, so I think we've seen certainly the recovery that Tapelo refers to um, through our client base. So, I mean, during the COVID era, we were very strong in supporting clients. We did realize, obviously, that there was a lot of stress in the economy. Um, but we've certainly seen, um, you know, the recovery coming through in performance of many of our clients across different sectors. Uh, but also what we're starting to see a lot in Botswana is, you know, new companies, new mining activity, um, et cetera, happening um, in the economy. There's a lot of growth across the many different sectors. So we do feel it, we do see it. Um, and what we're doing then is obviously positioning ourselves for further growth, but supporting our customers and our clients across the, their journey of growth and ensuring that the services, the solutions that we provide are certainly going to see our clients through um, into the recovery that, that we're starting to see. Okay. That's, that's what we have observed. No, that's fantastic because, I mean, as we're talking about the uh, COVID crisis, uh, one of the uh, remnants of the COVID crisis was a cost of living crisis that perhaps was exasperated by the uh, current Russia-Ukraine war. And France, coming to you, just a really critical sector, but a sector that uh, perhaps has been hardest hit by uh, inflation than uh, many others, if we look at what has happened to the price of food as a result of the, the, the Ukraine war. Uh, but your your uh, take on the uh, perhaps participation in your stock in the BSC uh, this year, especially in an environment whereby you have had a little bit of an investor angst towards uh, sectors like your own that are exposed to a, a, a consumer that, albeit is recovering, is still a bit vulnerable to some of the external shocks. Thanks, Rifi. Yes. Um, <clears throat> um, um, the first six months of this year, I mean, was, um, there was a lot of price increases from our partners, which is our clients, brand owners, from washing powder to to personal care as well. So all of those things have an effect on on our our um, uh, uh, our environment, and the consumers are under pressure. We see it every day. Um, consumers uh, downgrading on what they're buying, um, downgrading on brands and all of that, but. In general, um, the Botswana econ economy specifically is still growing from our side, and the other other opera other markets we, which we operate in um, also have um, a good growth uh, growth so far, which we can see um, coming through. But a lot of it is price increases as well, Fifi. But um, on the market side, our share is much stabler than it was before. Um, I think we're trading now at 5.2 pull up a she and uh, yeah we're very comfortable with that price okay uh, last but not least uh, Guido just uh, some of your introductory thoughts so because your uh, sector also quite uh, an interesting space if we just look at what interest rates and the increase in interest rates have uh, done to uh, the retail landscape and also the perception of risks coming from investors of investing in retail right now. Again, just a, a recap of uh, 2023, how it's panning out for you so far, so, and uh, your uh, presence on the BSC. Uh, good day, and thank you, Fifi, and your listeners. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, we'll all agree that uh, investing in Botswana and uh, in the real estate sector has been um, for long term sustainability has been a and is a, a good sector. Uh, certainly, uh, that uh, this is a good example of what was achieved during uh, the years uh, in Botswana. The property market is is relatively small, and so we are a typical example of com of a company that has gone further afield. 
And although we were listed in 92 and converted in a variable rate loan stock in 1996, over the last years, we expanded locally and, and internationally. With the active support of local investors, community, both private and institutional, it's important to realize that there is a, a, a good institutional um, set of, uh, of investors and the BSC support. We have grown the portfolio from literally a small local portfolio of 24 million Pula to 6 billion in 2023. 2022, making us the largest property counted by portfolio on the BSC. Interestingly, and that is really to your question, 75% of the properties are being held outside of the country. So you can be invested in real estate in Botswana, but actually benefiting from uh, management skills outside of the country. Allow me just to mention that RDC has some deep-rooted purpose and a vision, and we strive to, uh, to add shareholders' value by owning and managing strategic assets, so assets that are unique and that enrich the stakeholders and communities we serve. Our vision is to be the leading uh, real estate company in Botswana, known for its international reach, expertise, innovation, sustainability, integrity, and client-centric approach. Coming back to the question, it's clear that RDC has benefited from its listing on the BSE. Um, diversifying its portfolio, um, the reason for doing that, and we are now operating in seven different countries, sure. has enabled us to take advantage of cross-border management skills to improve the long-term sustainability of the portfolio and not being too uh, subject to, to the market, to, to a, a punctual market. And thirdly, to enhance long-term return to our shareholders with income streams and borrowings in different currencies. Coming back to your question, to your point on, on interest rates, by, by operating in, in, in Europe, we have interest rates that are lower. Um, by by having, uh, uh, taking advantage of deeper property sectors, we are able to, to really work as a natural edge to the benefits of, of uh, real estate investors. Okay. Uh, and uh, Guido, perhaps let me come back to you again, sir, because uh, as you, uh, you did uh, put forward the investment case of your company, uh, exposure to uh, Botswana's property market, one of the uh, fastest growing economies in Africa, also very diversified in terms of the uh, revenue that you get in your other operating markets as well. Tapelo just told us at the start of this conversation that he's looking to lure a few more investors onto his stock exchange. He's talking to a few and hopefully will get two new listings at uh, the end of the year. But for people who are looking at Botswana's property market, you mentioned the fact that the market is small. What then would you say to them about the benefits of listing there still against a backdrop of a smaller market than perhaps they are, they would like to see or are used to? Yeah, so if you, if you look at some of the stock exchanges in the region um, and, and the, 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 mark, the, the, the performance over the last few years has been very difficult for property stocks. Um, if you take the GAC, you would have seen that during COVID, the stocks were, were strongly hammered. The nice thing of Botswana is uh, it's an advantage and a disadvantage, but we are a, a, a relatively sheltered um, sector and the institutional investors are supportive of the, of the stocks. So there is not too much uh, volatility on the, uh, stock, uh, on the stocks. Um, it, we've, we've achieved very strong performance because with the support of the local investors we've managed to uh, do a, to provide the last 10 years a, a, to an average of 23 percent year-on-year growth and that was uh, and was boasted la last the last two years by a, a cross-border MA that we did by buying a property company on the stock exchange on the JSC to your to the point that I was making is that with the support of the local institution investors, we were able to trigger this acquisition in a time that was very difficult. And we clearly that resulted in us increasing incredibly our revenue. So last year we had a 258% revenue growth. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we use the BSC very much to, from cap, for our capital requirements and for bond and on the bond market. So we really take advantage of the BSC from that point of view. All right. Uh, Tapelo, then, 
Uh, uh, sure. So, Tabelo, to come back to you, so, so I see that the start of the year was pretty good for the BSc in the sense that uh, you um, essentially attained full membership uh, right now um, of the World Federation of Exchanges. And just to the, to the point on outlook for the BSc and what that looks like, and also to the uh, target, one of the targets that you have being to increase the level of foreign participation in your market, just how do you think or how has this move uh, potentially benefited you achieving that? And if you can just also speak uh, more uh, broadly about outlook for the rest of the year, sir. Yeah, I think, uh, look, uh, last year for the first time, we undertook a, a tour of the U.S. in terms of a roadshow by the BSE to the United States of America, mm -hmm. in which I think we consulted a lot of fund managers who are actually coming into our market. And one thing was very clear that, you know, as the BSE, we also need to conform to international standard in terms of compliance, in terms of integrity, and also in terms of promoting our market. And the, the idea of the full membership of the BSE have long been coined in 2018 when we became an associate member. And then after going through the demutualization in 2018, after successfully looking at upgrading our technological capabilities and also our compliance and regulatory, we ultimately applied to the WFE. They came here, they assessed the BSE and they awarded us the full membership of the World Federation of Exchanges in May 24th, 2023. And this comes up with a lot of benefits. Mm. It, it clearly, in our tour, one of the questions we are asked is, when are we joining the WFE? Because some of the international fund managers cannot participate in your market when you are not a member of WFE. And therefore, I think by us joining the membership of WFE, it actually opened up a lot of opportunities for, for, for our companies to attract foreign capital into our market. And it also helps because, you know, when we have foreigners in our market, it actually dilutes the, the views in terms of the local market, the, the, the local investors versus the, 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 the foreign investors, which I think is a very, very good thing. And some of the things that we are also looking at is that we've been very working quite well also developing some SME sector. There are some companies which we think are medium-sized, uh, which have been looking into our mentorship program called CPD. Uh, some of them might be looking to come to the market in the medium to short term. Some of them are actually very much short companies operating in our economy, and we are actually looking at, at, in, 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 into that. And also, I think in terms of the other project, like we have launched the Settlement Guarantee Fund, which I think is a, it's a, it's a it's an international benchmark requirement that we are expected to do. In terms of the outlook, I think 2023 is going to be a good year for us. Uh, we currently have about 46 bonds, uh, which is made up of about uh, seven government bonds, 36 corporate bonds, and uh, 37, I think 37 corporate bonds, and two commercial papers. And I'm happy that Guido is on, on, on and part of the panel here. He's one of the, the guys, the two companies in the market that were actually first to come to the market to introduce commercial paper. And I think by so doing, they have actually triggered a, a more listings for, for, for commercial paper. And believe me or not, by end of next week, we are at 46 now, by end of next week, we are bringing in additional 40 listings in the equity, in the debt formula. So the number will jump straight away to about 86 instruments. And this 40 is a combination of fixed income instruments and also commercial instruments. Thanks to the likes of the RDC, we are able to pioneer the first issuance of the commercial paper, and therefore they were able to trigger the, 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 the more listings in this particular sector. Exchange traded funds, we have about, uh, uh, how many, about uh, six exchange traded funds. We're looking at about a minimum of listing four to take them up to up to 10 by the end of the year. And therefore, I think it's a, it's a very good uh, 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 pipeline. So uh, turnover levels, like I said, we're looking at ending the year at, at the record turnover levels because of a lot of regulatory uh, deals that are coming into the market. And overall, I think generally, if you, if you look at the outlook in terms of the profitabilities of companies in the BSE, I think we can see most of the companies coming back to good profitability. And therefore, I think the return on investment for most investors is going to be good in 2023. So the 2023 looks very bright for, for the BSC in terms of the companies and also for the investors. Sure. France, perhaps some color from you. Uh, I am aware that uh, you also have a, a listing on 
on the uh, Johannesburg Stock Exchange. But uh, maybe you can talk to us about uh, some potential plans for expansion or growth on the BSC. I mean, Tabela talking about uh, the uh, fact that the likes of RDC leading the way in uh, the listing of commercial paper and how he's expecting a whole lot more parties to uh, follow suit. What, what, what are your plans for your presence there? Um, look, Fifi, I mean, it's good to hear these things and see how the Botswana Stock Exchange is developing. It's actually uh, amazing how it grows. I mean, uh, compared to the JSE, JSE is a much more mature market uh, or developed market in the, in the stock exchange. But uh, um, we originally um, um, listed on the Botswana Stock Exchange in 2017 and uh, only recently um, listed on the JSE. But it also it's a, a primarily listing on both exchanges. So there's no uh, secondary listing on the Botswana Stock Exchange or on the JSE. So both exchanges we see as very important in our growth to invest in the future. So um, and we really like the, the Botswana um, economy. And we with using these instruments that's available for us for growth, we will definitely have a look at it if, if the opportunity comes up. Okay. Uh, uh, Kapumpe, ma'am, just to go back to, to your role, I suppose your critical role as a financial institution in growing the uh, broader pie of the economy through access to uh, finance. So not only a listed entity, but also an entity that a lot of people knock on uh, your door for, for uh, access to capital in order to grow their businesses which can eventually maybe list on a, a stock exchange like the BSC. So just talk to us a little bit more about how you are assisting uh, companies in the region to uh, potentially uh, grow and uh, to move them into other markets. Yeah. No, thank you very much, Fifi, once again. So maybe a little bit of color on FNB, RMB. I think I'm using many acronyms here. So First National Bank, Botswana is the main license holder in Botswana. Uh, Rand Merchant Bank is the corporate and investment banking arm of the First Rand Group. You know, so the group is called First Rand, and a lot of our uh, viewers would know First Rand is listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. In fact, it is one of the largest leading financial institutions um, across Africa. And in terms of representation across uh, the globe now, because I think I need to boast a little bit and say the globe, as opposed to the region. We are physically present in about 10 countries across Africa, including South Africa, uh, but we do have a footprint of working across the non-presence countries. That's in Africa. Uh, but we also have an office in the United Kingdom. We recently opened an office in the USA, um, and we have representation in India and China. So when it comes to our helping to grow customers, um, clients, and helping them with growth across the footprint, part of this growth that we have, like opening up markets in the USA, our operations in the UK, is really to support one, our clients from the markets outside to come into Africa and also supporting our clients from South Africa, from Botswana, from Zambia, and many other countries across the region where we are present to establish themselves in other markets. Um, this is something that we certainly um, are focused on in a very large way. Uh, what we have done for, for the longest time was to support South African corporates to go into the rest of Africa. And there are many names, of course, that we would talk to where we are primary banker, primary banker from a South African perspective, but also across the Southern Africa region. And also extending into the West African region because we do have an office in, in Nigeria and we have an office in Ghana as well. But as I mentioned earlier, we are also looking at non-presence countries. We have done transactions in some countries across West Africa where we have no presence. We are also supporting clients across East Africa where we have no presence. So we are, but when I speak of these names and these clients that I'm mentioning, these are probably large clients. They'll be multinationals, they'll be regional players, um, etc. But we also, as a bank, as FNB and working together with RMB, do support many smaller corporates. Um, I think if I look at our business and commercial section, which sits in, in, in our FNB arm, 
Um, they, I think if I do recall correctly, the numbers are somewhere in the range of 60% of all small local corporates in Botswana have banking relationships with us. So this places us with a great responsibility, one, to support them in their growth, but also two, to look at what other opportunities and synergies do we create? You know, what sort of ecosystem are we putting in place, particularly from an RMB side, where we would bank a large, some of the much larger corporates who are then looking to do business um, with smaller corporates or with smaller SMEs. This is a role that we take great pride in, in terms of playing that particular role, okay. but also what we are doing to a very large extent as FNB Botswana is supporting many small corporates in Botswana by making them suppliers of services to the bank and across sort of our banking space. So supporting, providing services to us, but in that process, we are supporting growth across the across entities. We are in a closed period, uh, so I'm not at liberty to mention some numbers, but I think once our integrated report is out, you know, the market will be able to see what support we're providing to businesses in Botswana. Okay. So very proud of achievements. Yeah, no, Thank that you. will definitely be one to catch up on when those numbers are released. But Tabela, perhaps we finish it off. I mean, there uh, has been a generally positive and optimistic tone that has been set uh, by you uh, for your boss for the rest of the year. You're looking to increase the number of product offerings from ETFs to increasing the level of uh, bonds and the different kinds of bonds that are traded on the exchange as well as inviting a whole lot more uh, players to, to, to find a home on the BSC. But ultimately, what are the risks? Uh, as you see it right now, just uh, looking at what is going on in the world right now, what are some of the major risks to your outlook that perhaps we should take stock of also? Yeah, I think the, the ultimate risk that you should take uh, is, is generally also the, the just the economic uncertainty of the of the world, uh, which nowadays you don't look at long term to actually look at it. I mean, events unfold so much faster that they end up uh, affecting uh, all our plans. I mean, you look at the, 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 the Russia-Ukraine war, it came out of nowhere and ultimately uh, it, it propelled a lot of inflationary risks to, 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 to the market. And obviously you know that, you know, uh, currency depreciation is also in emerging market is, is, and, and, and developing markets. But when I include that, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a problem. And therefore, if you have uh, the uh, depreciation of the, uh, the pullers or the rents against the, the dollar at a much, much uh, larger scale, you are likely to not receive a, a lot of inward investment into the in, into the country relatively because i think you know the puller is also pushed to the rent and therefore anything that south, happens in south africa uh, we uh, the, our puller is pushed about 45 percent to the rent the puller is likely to be affected and then when the puller become affected it then means that to we'll suffer in terms of the dollar investment that we are likely to get in through and then when we suffer in terms of the dollar investment that we get in through uh, it looks like issues surrounding liquidity uh, becomes a becomes a problem and then you know the prices become subdued and then become a uh, very state and when the prices become very state you know it becomes very difficult for us to also attract listings because you know the guys who want to get into the market want to get into the market at the right prices when the valuations are right because they don't want to come to the market when the price when the prices are generally very low uh, because they will otherwise be selling their companies for 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 cheaply so those are some of the the, the issues that are that are that are actually come into the to the market but also i think the general uh undervaluation of majority of the shares in our market uh, especially in Botswana, a lot of shares are undervalued. They have made them very attractive to a lot of companies that want to uh, to actually take them over and take them out of the market. Because when the companies are undervalued, a lot of private equity or private money out there want to look into the stocks, buy them out, and then get them out of the stock exchange, which is a, a risk of delistings in, 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 in the market. But I'm happy that, you know, at the stock exchange in Botswana, we have a framework of attracting and retaining listings. That is why you be you, you recognize that unlike some of the markets in the region, we have been able to retain most of our listings. Although our listings haven't grown, but we haven't lost a lot of more listings like uh, uh, relatively compared to some of our markets in, 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 in the region. That is because of the strategy that we apply 
to really retain our distance. But I can't disclose the strategy now <laughs> because they, they will probably just copy it now. No, but I think other uh, bosses in the region would uh, definitely welcome knowing what that strategy is. There's a few uh, no names mentioned that are witnessing a, an increase in the number of delistings for the very uh, reason that you've cited. A lot of companies being undervalued, a lot of uh, private investors seeing value in these companies, buying them out and unfortunately uh, making them bid farewell to their respective stock exchanges. And that wraps up today's conversation on Botswana's market leaders and its outlook for growth and further development. Thanks. Once again, uh, to uh, Tapelo Cheole, the CEO of the Botswana Stock Exchange Limited, Kabhumpe Chola Kaunda, Director of Rand Merchant Bank uh, Botswana, France Reichardt, the uh, Chief Financial Officer of uh, CA Sales, as well as Guido Jacchetti, Executive Chairman of the Real Estate Group and RDC Property Group. And finally, thank you to our viewers for staying tuned. Until next time, it's goodbye.